just um, as a starter for Turner Offer, I mean, we've, you, one of the sort of big things about today is talking about how functions, you know, within a business, different functions can actually learn from each other. Um, what do you think, to sort of solve you know, productivity issues, what do you think, in your you know, vast experience of uh, working in business, what is holding companies back from, from more you know, discussion amongst silos? What, what, is, what is the, if you say, the, sort of the, what's the blocker, if you like? In terms of discussing productivity at the boardroom? Is yeah, across, across the different silos of a business. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it, I think sometimes it's just create, creating space and building it into the strategy. So, you know, many of the businesses I'm involved in will have strategic away days or will look at the business planning cycle. But actually in making sure that you're, fo you're focusing on where can you increase performance in the business productivity and not... We're not necessarily going to use the term productivity, but how can we how can we get more efficient in certain aspects of the of the business? The reason it doesn't happen is very often because businesses are more in a reactive mode rather than a proactive mode. So creating trying to take more control of the environment they're working in, I think, is is a is an issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, 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 so first of all, Rofa, thank you so much for outlining this all so, so clear uh, and also giving us some homework to do as Productivity Institute, which we'll definitely follow up with. However, there was one thing, you, uh, let's follow up a little bit on what, what, what Jim said, and that is, you know, how do we get out of these silos? And, and ultimately, this is very much about management practices. And, and you, you, you mentioned these management practices uh, uh, quite substantially, but I, I'm kind of wondering, what are the kind of management practices that you think are absolutely critical to get improved? Because it will start to a large extent with the managers and maybe we find it just hard as managers to actually get this focus on productivity. So what is it around management capabilities and competencies that you would like to see improved in order to see the company more driven on the productivity equation? Um, well, I, look, I think the first issue is, is about the competencies within management and the ability of management. So I think management training and leadership is particularly important and organisations who invest in their management and leadership will see greater results. That's certainly been my experience, both in my own business, with PLCs, SMEs and economic development. So all of the evidence I've seen is, is that you will create the culture through the leadership and management. And if that is not at the right level, you're going to, you're going to be hampered from the very, very out, outset. So I think that's the, the, the first issue. Succession planning within management is also a, a major issue, making sure that um, senior managers understand and have competency around the business. So in a larger organization, um, I have seen very good examples for rotation of management in different departments. So there's a good understanding of the different issues in the business is important. Um, and I think also the, the issue in terms of management understanding what are the issues for the employees and the functions that they're dealing that they are dealing with so that there's a, an engagement, a real engagement with how the business operates. Now I've seen that working really well. And I've seen it working really badly, where it's a you know the 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 directors and the um, managing director on board are on the you know the top floor of the organisation, and um, when people are called there, you know it's a trembling opportunity or a trembling experience for them, where actually the the board and the management are there to serve the organisation, and serve the employees. In my in my own view, to get the best for the organisation and the best for the employees. So that I think just uh, just understand. I don't know if that answers your. Question, Bart. I was a little distracted because someone just came into the house. Yeah, no, no, that, that's fine. No, you actually did. Maybe, maybe I can add one thing for your your reflection, and that is, uh, I think you mentioned it during during your your talk. It's collaboration and communication, right? I mean, a lot of this is to uh, basically pull the organization along. Your colleagues and other functions, but also the staff that is reporting to you. And so, so I wonder if you can reflect a little bit on how important it is to build this sort of collaborative culture and a culture in which you know, people are taken along because they know what you're up to as an organization and you show that you're actually listening to them as well because people on the shop floor quite often have a pretty good idea about you know, what is holding a company or an organization back in terms of performing better. Yeah, and look, I think I think that's right. But I think just respecting people and, and understanding that everyone has got an important role to work in, an, an important role in the company. So, you know, the, the person who's cleaning the offices is really important because that's actually creating an environment for the employees. 
the chief executive is equally important, but they should both be treated with the same respect. So actually having respect for different people within the organization, but creating a culture where employees can feed in, um, I think is really important. I mean, you mentioned the, the issue of how they can impact because they know what, what's going on. Um, the uh, em employee engagement um, board that was set up and the NIA networks was set up just over 10 years ago. And it's had a very dramatic effect because the, the employees are drawn from and they are elected by different parts of the organization. It is not by management, it's by the employees to represent the, the employee voice. So it's across, I mean, there's something just, just I think it's about 1,250 staff in, in the organization. I think that has been really helpful in terms of um, making sure that, that the employee voice is heard at the board table. And we, I chair the board, we have a board of directors, but we engage with, we engage and senior management engage in those meetings and hear at first hand what the issues are. And those are taken seriously in terms of the um, actions that follow from them and the implementation of, of suggestions from employees. It has, you know, the engagement on that level has had a very high, a very good impact in terms of employee satisfaction, in terms of driving up performance, and also in terms of employee re retention. And given the nature of the work that we're engaged in in NIA networks, um, the uh, the cost of turnover, well, the cost of turnover, high turnover in staff to any business is very significant, but the loss of very highly skilled engineers. Um, moving from one, you know, from the organization is, you know, it, it, it is very high. So you know, ensuring employee retention and employee development and progression is a big part of that. And I have to say the record in, in, in that business is very positive. So you can actually see the rewards, even in terms of the culture and the morale in the organization. Yeah. Something that we're going to be talking about a little later, Rafa, is, you know, how you bring productivity back into the into the firm and um, a question I had was how you create the right space for for business leaders to talk to each other uh, you know business leaders are in different functions of a business how do you create that that space I mean is it uh, is it up, also up to the CEO to, to create that space what, what, what are your thoughts on them? Well, I think it depends on the structure of the business, first of all. So, you know, it depends whether it's a, a you know, a, a, a very large business, quoted business listed, whether it's a, you know, a limited company or what, or it's an owner managed business. So it'll depend very much on the, on the structure of the, of the business. But the, the, my experience is, is how you, you get it to happen is you've got to make it, it's got to matter. It's got to be something that's important and that actually people understand that if we improve our, you know, for example, my husband and I ran a, a food service company for something like 20, 20 years. And our sort of diktat was if we deliver the right product at the right price on time in the right condition, well, then, you know, that's the, 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 the right issue. And everyone knew that. But to get to that point, you know, the stock accuracy had to be right. The products had to be right. They had to be the right quality. The IT system had to be right. You know, all, all of those. So people knew what their, their role in each part of the business was in terms of the delivery. So an understanding of how managers can play a role in terms of the improving the performance and the productivity of the business and their particular team or department's role, you know, is, is really important. And I think that's that's the issue. So it's it's part and parcel of the business. It's not something that happens over there or it's something that let, now let's talk about productivity. If it's not embedded in the business strategy, it's not going to happen. So that's why it's important that it's part of the boardroom and it becomes then in that waterfall effect in terms of discussion from the boardroom into the, the each functional head and across the organization and then comes back in, in, a, in a circular fashion back in on terms of reporting on progress that's made. Okay. We've um, had a few questions come in, Rafa, which I'd just like to sort of put to you um, from our online audience. Um, one 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 person is asking about the do we have a you know, the culture of short termism in the UK to what extent that perhaps is a negatively impact on productivity. Well, I do I do think it is, and and actually um, I was on the Industrial Strategy Council before it was stood down, and I think 2020, 2020 and one of the issues that we learned there was in terms of the short termism in terms of investing in in skills, uh, you know, for for staff. 
and that there was a higher proportion of um, sort of hiring for future skills rather than investing in the workforce. And I, I do think that is something that um, organizations do need to think about. So it's a, it's about trying to recruit in skills rather than sometimes necessarily develop the skills in, in the organization. So, you know, dealing with the short term is absolutely an issue. If you've got vacancies or you've got issues in the organization today, it's important that those are dealt with. But but what is not um, appropriate is to ignore the long term. So, you know, in thinking about the challenges that organizations have today, um, we also need to think about what the challenges are in 2025 and what the opportunities are going to be. So again, you know, we, we, we know that digitization is going to be um, further and um, import, more important in business than ever going forward. So thinking about the, you know, the future uh, structures or the future processes and organizations and how those might need to change um, going forward is important. So it's getting the balance right. Of course, you can't, you can't be looking so far into the future that you're uh, disregarding the perils that are right in front of you. Um, but you, you need to think, I mean, the responsibility of, of the directors of the business is the survivability and sustainability of the business. And so that can't just be about this year or this month. Can, can I ask a quick follow-up question? So, so productivity tends to be a lot about the long term. It's not something that you know you can easily change overnight. At the same time, you have this short-termism that actually is exacerbated by the current issues we're in. I mean, we have you know some people today cannot attend because they're busy you know putting out fires uh, because of all the issues that we have. How, what do you do as a leader, as a business leader, to deal with all the short-term issues that sort of loading up on your plate, but keep the focus on the longer term because that's where you need, you will ultimately have the gains when it comes to better business performance and, and growth? Well, I mean, I think there's no doubt that you can be derailed on a daily basis by issues. There's no question that that can be the case. But if you don't have a framework or a plan to work within, then you won't know where you're going. You'll simply be responding. So having a clear idea about what you're going to do over a, th a three year period and understanding in that plan or that strategy that may have to be flexed because circumstances change. So in some of the businesses I'm involved in, obviously we've had to change some of the um, issues around COVID. So there's been more money spent on IT than maybe had been planned. You know, there's been more money spent in terms of training the staff to deal with um, issues of home working, so health and wellbeing types of issues but but staying focused on what the business objectives are what you're trying to achieve but also having the ability to be flexible to deal with the issues that are that are coming at you but don't lose sight of what you're trying to achieve so unrelenting focus on the business objectives having to flex as and you know as is, is required but staying staying focused and um, making making sure that there's an understanding in the business. So, I come back to the issue. I know I mentioned it before, but actually communication and employee engagement and understanding. I mean, even sharing with employees, we know this is difficult. We understand it's difficult that you know that the issues of COVID. We understand that the spiraling inflationary pressures are difficult. The energy costs are difficult, and translating in that to what it means for the business. And if we are going to have these inflationary pressures in terms of wages, et cetera, what does that mean in terms of the business performance and the metrics that we need to look at? Mm. Because, you know, we, you, you just simply can't keep adding cost um, and not look at the, 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 the model. But, you know, staying, I think, just focused on the strategy and then trying to deal with the issues, but making sure you're bringing the team with you, the, staff, the, the employees with you, and that they understand what the challenges are and that there's a, a respectful understanding across the organization. Okay, um, perhaps just as a, a final uh, question, Rafa, we've had a very interesting question online about the four day working week, which you may be, you may be aware um, yesterday, actually, the, the interim findings from the um, <clears throat> UK's four day working week campaign show that 86% of uh, those participating companies said they will stick with a four day week and 49% said that productivity had already improved. Uh, it's a question actually both for you, Rafa and, and Bart actually, do you see the four day week as something that should become mainstream in order to improve productivity? Maybe Bart, do you want to take that? No, let Rafa start. Oh, Rafa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Rafa, Thank, you. Thank, you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bart. Um, Look, I think it's something that certainly could should be considered. It will depend on, on each organization and the focus of the organization. So um, organizations just can't simply change from, a, you know, a five-day week 
are in some cases, I mean, an organization that I, I, I'm involved in is a seven day a week, you know, 24 hours, seven days a week. So, um, so to get a model and to flex a model over a, a you know a, a period of time will take will take time. In NIE networks, we have an agile um, working uh, agile model that has been agreed with the staff. The staff have proposed it, and that that is in, in operation. So it will depend on the needs of the business and how businesses can can operate. I think it's easier to accommodate sometimes, whether it's the sector of the business or the scale of the business. For some businesses, the scale and the dependency on a small number of staff in maybe highly technical rules will mean that it would be more difficult to accommodate. But certainly, I think that any approaches where the business can continue to operate and it actually improves the well-being of staff and their ability to contribute and you know be more productive in the business environment, I think all of those issues need to be considered. And those are issues that should be discussed at boardroom tables, whether those are large boardroom tables or small boardroom tables, you know, it doesn't matter. But um, each business should really, you know, think about it and think about how do we make this, you know, a, a better environment for employees so, so that the employees are coming to work and are being engaged in work and being more creative and more productive in the time that they're with us in, in the organization. Yeah, I, I think I, I much agree. It, I think this is a long dis, longer discussion that businesses need to have. I mean, it's clear that there are changes in the way that people want to organize their work-life balance, the way they're sharing their tasks within households, and that will require us to rethink how we associate people with their work environment. But at the same time, it puts a burden on all of us, on companies, but also on employees. What does that need? What does flexible working mean? What are the skills that you will have to acquire to work more effectively and more productively with digital means from home? So going from this you know, five day to four day is not, it doesn't come easy. And it really needs a commitment, both from the business as well as from the people involved to do this. So I would recommend any business who wants to and knows that these kind of wishes are there from employees to think hard about this and have a discussion and it's all about communication that we talked about earlier on how can you do this so that we you know collectively feel that it makes people's lives better but also the business performance better so it's a longer conversation more than the the time that we don't have anymore indeed indeed it's a longer <laughs> conversation well i think on that note uh, can i just personally thank you Rafa, for for your time today um uh, it's been lovely to see you and for your your input into this this conference many many thanks thank you Bart, i'm sure would uh, yeah great thanks thank Rafa. well fantastic okay thank you Rafa.